So in class, we've been talking about mitosis, or cell division, where you start out with one cell, and you create two genetically identical cells. We are now going to start talking about meiosis, which does not make two genetically identical cells. They actually create four genetically different cells. So a, re a review on mitosis, we do mitosis in order to produce cells with the same information that are exact copies and have the same number of chromosomes. Mitosis is also used in asexual reproduction, especially in single cell eukaryotes like yeast, paramecium, and an amoeba, or simple multicellular eukaryotes like a hydra. This is a picture of a hydra, and hydra actually use a specialized form of asexual reproduction called budding. Here you can see a small bud here. So this hydra has used mitosis to create an entirely new individual. Eventually this will pinch off, and this little bud will become an adult hydra someplace else. So it's important to remember in mitosis, you end up with two genetically identical cells. But what about the rest of us? If a complex multicellular organism wants to reproduce, they have to join egg and sperm. But do we make egg and sperm by mitosis? Well, if we did, we would have an egg with 46 chromosomes combining with a sperm with 46 chromosomes and it will create a zygote with 92. This does not work, so we cannot use mitosis to make egg and sperm. If we were to take the chromosomes out of the nucleus of a cell, this is what we would see. We can actually take these chromosomes and map them out. And this is what we would get. You map them by actually putting them in order from biggest to smallest. And if you notice, there are 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs. You can also see that the 23rd pair has, is not indicated by a number 23. It actually indicates that we have two X chromosomes. This is an indication that this is a female. This map that we're looking at, this entire thing, is called a karyotype. Chromosomes, as you can see, come in pairs. So there are two copies of one chromosome. This is called diploid and can be written as 2n. If we do this again, and we map it out. This time you can see that there are 46 chromosomes with 23 pairs, but the 23rd pair, instead of having two X's, it has one X and one Y. This indicates that it is a male karyotype. And again, each chromosome has two copies, so it is diploid. But how do we make sperm and eggs? Well, we have to reduce 46 chromosomes to 23. So you must half the number of chromosomes. And when you half the number of chromosomes, this is called haploid. So you have an egg and a sperm, or a cell, with 46 chromosomes that undergo meiosis. And you end up with egg and sperm that have 23. Both egg and sperm are called gametes. When egg and sperm join, this is called fertilization and it creates a zygote with 46 chromosomes. So here on the left, these are diploid cells. They have two copies of each chromosome. On the right, you have haploid cells. These only have one copy of each chromosome. 
and to get from diploid to haploid, you undergo meiosis. So each of these pairs is called homologous chromosomes. This just indicates that both chromosomes have the same pair of matching genes. We said today that genes are basically a part of DNA that gives the cell instructions. And some of these genes are responsible for some of your inherited characteristics. So why do you have brown hair, blonde hair, or green eyes versus brown eyes? And if we break down the word homologous, homo means the same, while logus means information. So each of these chromosomes is carrying the same information. So for example, we have a diploid cell, and in this case, 2n equals 4. In humans, 2n would equal 46. So here we have homologous chromosomes. And when you double the DNA, you're going to end up with double-stranded homologous chromosomes. So each one of these carries the same gene. These genes, for instance, can code for either brown or blue eyes. And depending on which one you inherit, that can determine what eye color you have. So in meiosis, because we're trying to half the number of chromosomes, instead of dividing just once, like in mitosis, we're actually going to divide twice. So you're going to start out with four chromosomes in this case, which is the diploid number, or 2n, and you want to end up with a gamete. To do this, you first copy the DNA, you undergo prophase 1, you undergo metaphase 1, where the chromosomes line up in the middle, you undergo anaphase and then telophase. Telophase is that division of cells. So we started with 1 and we've now gotten to 2 cells. However, these cells are pretty much the same as our original, so this is not what we want to end up with. We actually want to do one more division. Here, we notice that we, are, we have not gotten to, to what we want. We are looking for a gamete with two chromosomes, which is haploid, or one in. So we have to keep going. Each of those cells that were produced in the first division now undergo a second division. The second division looks a whole lot like mitosis. So it again undergoes metaphase where the chromosomes line up in the middle. It goes through anaphase and then telophase. These are what can become sperm or egg. Sperm and egg are called gametes and you end up with four of them. Each one of these has two chromosomes is haploid or 1N. So meiosis is the special cell division in sexually reproducing organisms that can reduce the number of chromosomes from 2N to 1N or diploid to haploid which is halving and this is what makes gametes which are egg and sperm. So mitosis and meiosis is actually in a cycle So we, we use meiosis to make gametes, and then we use mitosis to actually grow, repair, and develop. So if we look at the life cycle, we have a male and female. Females produce eggs in their ovaries. Males produce sperm in their testes. This process, you use meiosis, sperm and egg meet in fertilization, and they create a zygote. This zygote is diploid, so it has one copy of the DNA from the egg, the other copy from the dad, or from the sperm. When they join, they create this diploid zygote. This zygote undergoes mitosis in order to develop into an adult.
So we have egg and sperm, which are haploid cells, which undergo fertilization to create a new individual. This individual has a combined chromosomes or combined genetics from mom and dad. This individual, if it is a male, can then create his own sperm through meiosis. And if you notice, his sperm, his sperm is genetically different from his father and his mother. So we have normal cells which undergo meiosis to produce gametes. Fertilization occurs where you're combining both egg and sperm to create a zygote with 46 chromosomes. This zygote un undergoes mitosis several times to create an embryo. That embryo then uses mitosis to grow and develop. So the importance of meiosis, you have consistency over time, where meiosis keeps the chromosome number the same from generation to generation. So mom and dad in humans both have 46 chromosomes. They undergo meiosis so that each has 23, and then 23 plus 23 equals 46 for that offspring. There is also change over time. So meiosis introduces genetic variation. So gametes of offspring do not have the same genes or the same gametes from the parents. There's always a new combination of traits. So here are four possibilities that this offspring can get. These are all different from actually what he got from his parents. So how does this explain family resemblance and differences? Why are kids so similar to the parents but not exact? This is what we are going to answer in class tomorrow. If you have any questions, please write them down and share them in class when we start talking about this. Also, please start thinking about these questions here.